Welcome to 60 Parsecs. This is the successor and maybe actual sequel to 60 Seconds, which was a game that had you run around your house and gather up all the supplies that you would need and toss them inside of your bomb shelter so you could see how long that you could survive. It's the same company, same kind of a theme. I love the game so much that I watched it obsessively, and I watched it so obsessively that I never purchased it. So, all right, everything looks okay there. Pick an Astro Citizen Cadet. Are we going to be Dee Dee or Emmett? I mean, we're going to be Emmett, right? Alert! Nuclear Apocalypse eminent Emmett executing order 1961 new protocol initiated commenced astro citizen emergency drill and brace for nuclear impact now I suspect this is going to be something similar we will probably be running around and it looks like maybe packing a lifeboat um Perhaps the worst has happened and we will be targeted. Okay, welcome. This is an orientation. Okay. Move, Astro Citizen. We don't have much time. So, as we get close to things, it looks like we can grab them. And it's filling up our hands. We're crashing into things. That's kind of fun. Now, we got to go drop it in the escape shuttle. Okay, where's the escape shuttle? There it is. So now we gotta find some medical supplies, all right? Everything's kind of in the way here. Oh, there's a door. Got it. We need the handbook. Where in the hell is the handbook? Not here in the bathroom, okay. So... There it is. Trying to grab it. There we go. We got it. Head back to the escape shuttle. Find some crafting resources. All right. I don't have any idea where the crafting resources would be. I see a lot of cans of soup. Yet another reason that this might be in continuity with uh, 60 seconds. We are terrible. Okay, so that's crafting resources. Crafting resources are in that bucket. Find a crewmate... If we're going to be stuck forever, we got... Nope, not a guy who got himself stuck in the bucket. How about Didi? <laughs> hey, Didi, come on. We need to drop old Didi down the hatch. Come on, Didi. Alert. Uh oh Grab whatever and whoever you can and head for the shuttle. Now we've actually got the time. Okay. Nope, nope. No, no, he says. Let's grab this flashlight down here. Oh, no, it's some sort of weird cow thing. How about... Nope, that? No. Open the door! We've got, uh... Retro Nick Fury here. Uh, there's some sort of... thing here, and a soup. Sort of weird shovel thing on the wall. Let's get more soup. Can we get another person? Maybe. We don't got a lot of time left. To the shuttle! That's it. In we go. Oh yeah, it blew up. And we escape. This is 60 parsecs. It is the follow-up to 60 seconds. Um, I'm not seeing the restream chat on here. I'm going to have to look at the video settings once we actually get into the game here. I want to see if I can put this in like a full screen borderless here. So if I hit exit... Uh, how about if we just like alt tab it a little bit and then 
Yeah, it looks like I can resize the window, maybe? That'll work for now. We can make it look better in the future. Okay. So we've got Dee Dee Hawkins, Megan Mann, Tom Thompson, and Emmett Ellis. We've got a lot of soup. I did pick up a lot of soup. Some sort of golden cow artifact. An atomic battery. A handbook. Looks like there's a spacesuit back there. And some sort of crafting module. That's new. Communications, main computer. All right, let's check these. Oh, there's our, our med kit. Uh-oh. Whatever's supposed to be in there has got a little hammer to break it, and we don't have it. All right, let's check here. Hey, Astro Computerized Assistant reporting for duty. You must be Emmett, right? I'm pleased to announce that according to my data, you qualify to become captain of this vessel. Welcome aboard the escape shuttle, Captain. On behalf of the Astro Citizen program, please accept our apologies for the small inconvenience of being relocated 60 parsecs away from Earth. Current goal, find a safe place to land on and then try and contact the outside world. Okay. Please power up the main computer for further instructions. It's located in the center of the shuttle. Follow the regular rationing protocol and feed your crew. I await your decisions, Captain. Well, that's interesting. Okay. And then we've got different things here. Okay, goals. So the captain's goal is to make five successful intelligence attribute decisions and to find a landing spot. Here's our statistics. I expect this uh, successful expeditions to be a murderously low number before it happens. All right, let's take a look here. Emmett Ellis. We are flexible, brilliant, and wimpy. We have Dee Dee. She is limber and of average intelligence and strength. Looks a little twitchy, don't you think? I love the art style on this, though. It's exactly the same art style as uh, as uh, 60 seconds. So 60 parsecs. 60 parsecs is a long, long way away. Uh, one parsec is about... 3.25 light years, so 60 parsecs is going to be something on the order of 200 light years away from home. It's too far. One light year, too far. Uh, Tom Thompson looks like he's a, uh, uh, yeah, he's a major. He's a major Tom. Okay, well, there we go. Once magnificent blonde hair. Okay, so he's average agility, he's clever intelligence, and he is fit. And then Megan Man is flexible, clever, and average in strength. Okay. Well, cool. Let's go ahead and close this and click here. Captain, all Astro Citizen missions begin with the commander off commanding officer delivering a morale-boosting speech. Don't let me stop you. Everyone's really looking forward to your speech, Captain. So am I. This is it. You can really show what breed of captain you will be on this incredible journey. What kind of speech will you give? Looks like we could give an agility-based speech, an intelligence-based speech, or a strength-based speech. Well, we are the best at intelligence, so we'll select that. Oh, I love these old punch cards and how this is kind of one of those um, flip counter kind of displays. This is gorgeous. All right. Well, I'm hoping this crafting thing helps us make more stuff. I don't know what this is going to be yet. So, um... Looks like there is a flashing light. Oh, we could have had something up here, too. A flashing light. Oh, okay. So we'll just click on this for the end of the day. Um, our choice was to make an intelligence-based decision, and it looks like we can assign food rations. Is that a sock puppet? Sock puppet rations? Well, we didn't get a sock puppet. That sucks. And medical kit rations. All right, let's go ahead and pull the lever. Okay. Day two. You knew exactly what to say. Your convincing speech was more than enough to prove your worth as captain of the last human crew in the universe. That was quite a performance, Captain. Your crew started cheering even before you were finished with the speech. Long live the captain filled the cabin. If any sound could travel through the soundless void outside the hull of your ship, that would be it. One thing's for sure, you are ready for any challenge this galaxy throws at you. 
Megan reported being glad to have you as her captain. I'm wondering if they are being kind and gentle to us because it's the first day. But we'll find out. Let's go ahead and come over here and look at the log. Oh, that was all that we had before. Okay. And then... Okay, so nothing special there. I guess we just look at the computer every day and it tells us what's going on. It says, Captain, it's important to keep yourself and your crew well fed. One portion of delicious canned soup is enough to sustain a human for a few days. I doubt we'll find any other useful rations here in space, and that's why it's important to keep a good inventory of your stock. Unless you want to eat your own crewmates. Ha <laughs> ha, that was a joke. Uh, please appreciate it and laugh, Captain. Thank you for your cooperation, Captain. So who will perform the routine supply check? The only requirement is simple mathematics. I realize I may be asking a lot, but I have a good feeling about this crew. All right. So if we click on these people, we can choose different things. Can we, we can come back over here and maybe look and see what everybody's... Ah, here we go. If we click on them, we can actually see they've got hunger, health, Sanity, that's probably what sock puppets for, is to give sanity and morale. Now we could ration soup to everybody. That would use four of our soups, I don't think so. We've only got the one med kit. I was hoping it would tell us a little bit more about Tom Thompson. Uh, like what his actual strengths and stuff were. She's loyal, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Well. All right, let's go ahead and we'll do it. We are, we've got a, like a three in smarts. So if it's math, we can do math. Crafting unavailable. Please come back later and have a nice day. It looks like we've got something for chemicals, maybe minerals or rocks and power. Okay. So I'm not gonna feed anybody today. In uh, 60 seconds, they could go four or five days without getting hungry, and the game would tell us they were hungry, they were starving, things like that. So, um, just like in a real survival situation, you start off pretty well fed. So, we'll, we'll live on the knife's edge of hunger in a few days. Day three. Good news, the captain came pre-stocked with an emergency food supply, plus three. And the routine supply check is now complete and does not compute. An error was made. That's what I get for trusting humans to do math. One soup. One of the supplies went missing. The total current number of soup cans on board is 11. The food you collected is more than sufficient for now. Just don't eat it all at once. Okay. And we've got this atomic battery down. Ooh, you can click on it. It makes noises. Nature's creative power is far beyond man's instinct of destruction. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure about that. We just blew up our entire planet. And I love how he's got a spacesuit, but he's actually pinned a ribbon to it. And if you look at the ribbon, five things were getting really dire on, uh, on uh, 60 seconds. All right, Captain, I told you I switched on the crafting shuttle in the back of the shuttle, right? Did you forget about it? I can't say if it was your engineering skill or dumb luck, but you were able to craft a high quality item. Score. Crafting completed, new item available, stereo communicator. So we've made a stereo communicator. Guessing that it's sort of a wireless communication system. I don't know what happened, Seely Bob. It was. It was strange. Everything went <clears throat> for a second. I was connected to the internet and everything. Um, I didn't drop anything that I was, like, playing in the background or anything, but Steam also disconnected on me, and then it all came back a few seconds later. Uh, since OBS waits like 30 seconds between retry attempts, I had to quit the stream entirely and then bring it back because I didn't want to just sit around for 30 seconds. So we made a stereo communicator. What can we do here? It says, Captain, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is we're using the airlock as a space toilet. It's now packed full and ready to be emptied in space and the bad news is the airlock hatch is jammed. 
If you don't fix it soon, our clogged toilet will quickly become an extinction-level event. It's now or never, hu uh, Captain. Will you save the human race? We didn't make any tape. We didn't make any tape, so we're gonna just have to choose not to do it. Oh no. Now we could make some tape. I don't know what the chances of us needing it are after this, but we're gonna go ahead and make it. Looks like we can only make one thing at a time. So yeah, let's make another, let's make a tape. We'll get that next turn. So far, everybody's still looking okay. So I think day five's gonna be our big change here. So we're still not rationing anybody any food yet. Wish I could uh, name these guys. Oh, see, here we go. Now it's saying everybody's hungry. All right. Doing nothing about the airlock toilet was risky, Captain. Luckily for you, the door unjammed on its own. Eventually, probably because the odor buildup made it corrosive. <laughs> Too bad about all the health hazards it caused, but then again, it's a 100% human problem, which makes it 100% yours and exactly 0% mine. And then we, we crafted the tape. So everybody is hungry at this point in time. We're looking a little scruffy. Our hair's gotten a little poofier. Um, but really, everybody else looks exactly the same. So I'm not too worried about it. And we now have a roll of tape over here. We've got our communicator over here. What do we need to do today? It says, Captain, our levels are working below their optimal levels. Well, I mean, look at these wires. I, this whole pod was designed below optimal level. That's normal, right? I was unable to determine that our wiring might be at fault. I suggest that you take a look under the proverbial hood and fix the wires before a malfunction occurs. The wires are stuffed into a dark corner, tangled and dusty. You'll have to figure out how to trust it yourself. I trust your instincts. Not that I have a choice. So, is our agility more important or our intelligence? Since it's in a dark corner and all tangled and everything, I'm going to go with agility. It's not our best skill, but we're not bad at it. All right, so hungry. We're going to... I don't think everyone's going to, like, die immediately. So let's... Let's go and see what we get. Day six. It's not a bunch of skeletons, right? Okay, there we go. It says, are you okay, Captain? Your frizzy hairstyle tells me you got electrocuted. Perhaps you shouldn't play with wires if you're not agile enough to avoid getting shocked. I'm afraid that burn won't heal quickly. I suggest using medical supplies if there's any to spare. Just be more careful next time. Scrubbing you off the shuttle walls would not be fun if something goes wrong. So, did something happen to us here? We are still hungry. But our health is okay, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um... And everybody is still... I mean, they're hungry, but, like, nobody's about to starve or anything else like that, so... It says, I'm disturbed, Captain. You've reported hearing a child crying somewhere in the shuttle. But my sensors don't show anyone unaccounted for on board. Certainly no stowaway children. This may be an auditory hallucin hallucination caused by the stress of witnessing a nuclear war. And the other possibility is that my sensors are malfunctioning. There really is a stowaway. Should we search... The shuttle. I mean, why not, right? Maybe we'll find something cool and useful. I certainly don't think we'll actually find a child. Exactly, Sealy Bob. Might as well. What the fuck? Why not? Okay. Says you and the crew tried to find the source of the mystery child's cries, even though the others couldn't hear it. But after sifting through every crate and searching every dark corner, you didn't find anyone else. It was a stress-related auditory hallucination, I'm not surprised. When the nuke started flying down on Earth and the space station exploded, your crew barely escaped with your lives. Billions weren't so lucky. Megan is still loyal, says you are starving, Captain. Better grab a bite. Dee Dee's starving. Make sure she eats right. Tom is starving. He won't survive without soup. Megan is starving. Can you survive? Can you secure a serving of soup for her? 
So we're holding our stomach here. We're looking a little emaciated. Tom's belt doesn't fit him right anymore. Everything seems a little loose. She's pitched forward some. Everybody, she's got some, some cheekbones shown there. Everybody is kind of in a bad way. And everybody is now starving. Now, I wonder how far they can go on starving before they die. That said, something weird is going on with the computer here. It says, your attention's required, Captain. This is most abnormal. We are registering unknown transmissions, but we cannot identify who is sending them, and more importantly, what they contain. This might be a solar flare interference, or worse, a new type of Soviet encryption. We need to decipher these signals as soon as possible, for all we know, our survival depends on it. Who do we want to put in charge of monitoring communications? Well, let's let's do it ourselves. I have a feeling that we... Since we had three bars of intelligence and two and one, I've got a feeling we may be the most intelligent. We are the only one that was listed as brilliant. Um, and I think maybe now is a good time to give everybody some food. All right, let's do it. Let's see what happens when we feed everybody when they're starving. Do they come all the way out of it or do they just go back up to hungry? Uh, looks like me. Ooh, it's called First Contact. You should play 60 Seconds. It's an amazing looking game. The only problem is I have literally watched I don't know, 60 hours of people playing that game, and so to play it myself now at this point in time, having played all that, didn't seem like a great investment. But when this came out, and I hadn't seen anybody else play it yet, I knew I had to get it, especially because it was it was space thing, which was which was awesome. That's right up my alley. It's uh, right up your alley, as Doctor Hammond might say. What well, do you think he got his doctorate in? Economics? Marketing? I mean, we're led to believe that it's some sort of science-y thing, but he's a con man, not... Well, I'm sorry, he's a businessman. There's no difference between con men and businessmen. <laughs> he's a, uh, he's a, he's not a scientist, though. Or at least he never does any actual science. Anyhow, Captain, we need, you need to see this. I'm not easily excited, but this is one of the greatest moments for humanity and human-made AI alike. We're not alone in this universe. The signals we intercepted were finally decrypted. They are alien transmissions, as in coming from other life forms. And no, I do not mean the Reds. It's something we've never seen before. There seems to be a number of intelligent civilizations in this galaxy. The signals are coming from everywhere. We can safely assume that we're going to meet some of them sooner or later. Oh, our, or rather, your life will never be the same, Captain. So Megan is still loyal. And everybody has gone back to a hungry state. Um, we used two cans of soup that we could see and two that we couldn't that were kind of in overflow storage. So we're down to eight. Or no, seven soups. Seven soups. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eleven minus four. Okay. You know, maybe... I'm actually kind of curious how far they can get into starving. There's something about testing my limits. One of the things about 60 seconds was that you had to manage food and water. These seem to go together. Soup seems to be everything that I need to sustain myself. Marvelous, marvelous soup that's good for 727 years. No, it's not going to divide evenly among four people. Now, we can make soup. I wonder if we can recycle the old soup cans. Let's see if we can do that. Recycle. I can recycle a soup. Okay, so it does not look like I can recycle old soup cans. But we do have some more that we can do out of chemicals. What can we make out of chemicals? We could make soup out of ten chemicals. Alright, let's make one can of soup. I'm not going to feed anybody today, but let's make one can of soup. That'll give us up to eight cans of soup. That means two more feedings for the entire crew. 
Uh, Long-term space travel presents many risks to one's physical well-being, from muscular atrophy to laziness to diets notoriously high in sodium. I th it might be all that soup. I'm concerned about the decline I've seen in the entire crew's physical fitness since our little sojourn began. I recommend a daily regimen of movements that use only your own body weight. You don't need any equipment for those, just gravity or artificial gravity. Any volunteers? Well, I have to pick somebody. I made one. It cost 10 chemicals. At least that's how I that's how I saw it. We'll find out how many we get. But I don't think that it's advantageous enough to give me one for everybody in the crew. Um, I suspect that working out has a potential to increase our strength or agility stat. Or maybe it's based on that, but it's probably also going to make us hungry. Um, well, let's go ahead and have Didi do it. She was a child athlete, so if anyone's going to get athletic, we can let Didi Dawkins do that. Uh, we still can't choose anything about our navigation system or spacesuit, and I have no idea what to think about this. I just click on it, it goes boom. Soup is not people. Do not give in to this clear light anti-American propaganda. <laughs> Alright, well, let's go ahead and move on to day nine. Didi's form was impeccable. Pull-ups. Planks, squats, and lunges in this environment. She even added weight by lifting some spare parts for the shuttle. Sweaty and roaring, Dee Dee crushed that workout <laughs> like an empty can of soup. The automated system predicted benefits for being a model astro citizen. A hidden dispenser opened up and spit out two soup cans. I'm sorry to report that these are the only two surplus cans hidden aboard the ship, or are they? So, we got two cans of soup for Dee Dee doing good exercise, and we got another one from crafting. Excellent. Now, I've got to imagine feeding people could probably make them more likely to be loyal. But I don't know what loyalty is good for at this point. We're up to 10 soups, though. We are up to 10 soups. It's not bad. Now, how are we for our supplies still? Okay, so we still have 26 chemicals. It looks like we are slowly accumulating minerals and chemicals. Is that right? 16? Let's keep an eye on this. 16 and 26. Also, we can upgrade some things. We can upgrade the artifact. We can upgrade the atomic battery. We can upgrade the handbook. Or we can upgrade the tape. What do you guys think the upgrade means? I'm willing to try upgrading something. But what is it? I figure that the atomic battery would maybe give us more power. I don't know if that's contributing to this power here or not. Um, I wonder what upgrading it, an artifact would even do. Oh, and if we had some more energy over time, we could upgrade the crafting module. Maybe that would unlock some new recipes for us. I guess let's upgrade the artifact. Upgrading the artifact takes 10 power. Okay, uh, let's do upgrade the artifact. That'll be the first thing that we upgrade. But I want to take note of everything that we've got here, 26, 16, and 16. And I want to wait one turn, and I want to see if we're accumulating on all of them or not. So let's see what we've got here. Captain, one of our non-critical subsystems is having a meltdown. The malfunction is serious, and the system won't talk to me. It has to be dealt with directly. If we don't do anything, the breakdown will spill a brain cell atrophying or atrophy inducing coolant into our ventilation system in other words you'd better improvise a solution into the crisis all right so what would we do to try and cancel the breakdown we've got three options here and i have a feeling this will probably hurt our intelligence stat if we if we screw it up so we could use the artifact pray to it maybe hope for a miracle 
we could use the communicator. Maybe we got it for parts to fix the system. And then first aid kit, which I'm assuming we would use to stave off the medical effects of the coolant. Let's try the communicator, because I know we can craft another communicator if we have to, because we crafted this one. All right, and we'll keep an eye on this. This was 26, 16, and 16. The X just means that you're not doing anything. If we do the X, nothing. We just let it happen. It's kind of like um, when we let the uh, toilet dissolve things and it got corrosive enough to open up the airlock and vent everything out. So let's, let's try the communicator. Maybe we can get some parts out of it. We can always make another communicator if something, if it, if it breaks it to fix it. I feel like there's probably a certain amount of RNG here, and yet there's probably still some optimal decisions to be made. The malfunctioning subsystem decided to remain composed. It might not have wanted to talk to me, but your use of the communicator to talk about its feelings did the trick. <laughs> so we talked about its, its uh, feelings. However, it does look like it destroyed the system. That's unfortunate. Uh, the situation is under your control, but as you finish your pep talk, the communicator sparked and emitted some weird buzzing sounds. Now, everybody is starving. All right. So, let's see if people can stand to be starving for two days. I will feed two people, and I will let two people go one more day, I think. Uh, so let's look at what's happening today. It says, Captain, I protest your self-appointment as the captain of the vessel does not give you the right to injure your crew's heads. This also includes accidental flying soup can related injuries. If you have anything to treat the wound with, I strongly suggest you use it. And we could use a med kit, we could use tape, or we could tell them that they ought to just suck it up and deal with it. I wonder who got injured. Starving. Starving. Starving and hurt. She's loyal to us. And starving. Um... Alright. Let's... Take a look here. Let's first, let's look here. Crafting module. So we're gaining two a day. So we're getting two, two, and two. Also... We can repair the communicator for 10 chemicals. So we could have it back as an option. That's cool. I like that a lot. Uh, we are still not at the point where we can upgrade the crafting module. I do wonder if upgrading the atomic battery instead of the artifact, although we'll have 10 next turn. So um, I'm wondering if upgrading the atomic battery gets us more energy per turn. Let's go ahead and upgrade the artifact though, just to see what it does. Yep. How we're going to upgrade a weird golden cow, I don't know. And let's actually use our first aid kit. Um, there may be situations where we actually need the first aid kit, but she's hurt and she is loyal. So I guess we'll just use it and see. It does look a lot like Mubi, doesn't it? All right, so we need to assign food to two people. Let's assign food to the two in the front. And they just happen to be the first two here. And then we'll see if the ones in the back perish or not from spending one day at starving. If not, I will feed them tomorrow. If so, that tells us everybody can survive a day at starving or not. Uh, we got an achievement for Tinkerer. Ah, okay. My record suggests that using medical supplies for medical emergencies is a prudent choice. How did you think of it, Captain? So, Tom is still starving. We now have a new item, Extraordinary Artifact. We and Dee Dee are back up to Hungry. They are still at starving. Holy crap. What is going on? <laughs> It's got glowing eyes and weird alien sigils down here at the bottom. 
Oh no. That's ominous. All right, what's happening here today, sir? A big, really big surprise has cropped up on my scanners. A dark, swirly skied planet lies directly in our path. It's covered in giant storm, but beneath the dark swirls, my scanners detect hazy, indistinct heat signatures and a multitude of structures. A thunderous world is probably an improvement over this mind-bogglingly empty vacuum. Should we initiate the landing protocol? Well, yeah, let's go to a new planet. Let's do it. Okay. So, let's go ahead and start. <laughs> she says, okay. Megan, you're going you're gonna to have some soup. And Tom, you can have some soup. So they're getting soup. We're not getting soup. Now we're up to 10. Don't know what else that we're going to have. I don't know what's up with the communicator and stuff like that. Um, we can only do one of these things at a time. So I'm going to upgrade our communicator. I do want to look at upgrading this thing here, but I want to repair the communicator. If we get down to this weird, swirly... Man, it's so ominous. It's all, like, red. <laughs> if we get down to the weird, swirly planet, maybe it will be helpful to have a communicator. So down we go. We may not be able to take off from this planet. It may be randomized, and then that's the planet we get. So, on our descent toward the storm-ridden planet, crewmate Thompson piped up and said he recognized the storm below. It looks like our predictions for Earth after a Soviet nuclear attack. But with you in command, we can weather anything. With Tom's note in mind, you beautifully directed our craft away from particularly green parts of the atmosphere and onto a safe resting spot on the planet. Unfortunately, however, atmosphere electricity fried the communicator on the way down. On the ground, Tom looked out and realized this wasn't at all like a Soviet nuclear attack. This was something else. The planet's surface has experienced a number of wars and trauma, nuclear or otherwise, and we'd best be wary while exploring. Megan is still loyal. We got really lucky. It damaged the already damaged communicator, but then our repair kicked in afterwards. So it's interesting. Anything that's done by the crafting system happens after the events of uh, the daily event, basically. So good to know. Good to know. Okay, so everybody's doing pretty okay. Looks like we've got a broken pipe over here. That's not good. Also, the artifact has become damaged. That's worrisome. It doesn't seem to be happy about that. Look at all the glowing red eyes and and uh, glowing magic mana that's coming out of here. Yeah, there's a lot in here that's currently kind of alarming. Let's look at what the crisis is. Captain, the expedition module in the back of the captain cabin's been activated. All you need now is to stuff someone in a spacesuit and send them outside. The shuttle will have to do for now, but it's not fit to be a permanent shelter. Let the space colonization commence. Yes, this is our new world. With what looks like little fallout shelters and stuff like that out there. Who should we send? Should we send Tom Thompson? I feel like he's probably a pretty good, a pretty good person to send. He wants to be heroic, let's let him. Oh, cool. So, there's a glade, a radio zone, Warhead Town. Looks like we can send people to there. There's three of 12 locations, so we can destination, character. All right, um, how about into the glade? The glade sounds pleasant. It sounds relatively non-threatening. Ah, it tells us if we click on it. Chance for minerals, the hazards is grass, maybe? And length is, I'm guessing that's two turns. Radio zone could give us chemicals and something. Hazards are sickness, grass, tentacle monsters. 
Warhead Town gives us chemicals, something. Ooh, sanity or a sock puppet. Hazards, tentacle monsters. The length is three. This one seems like the most things that we could get for the least hazard. So let's send him to Warhead Town. Yeah, it's a biohazard sign, which is why I'm assuming that we'll we'll get sick or something, because we don't have a medical kit anymore. I mean it could be poisoned, but I think it's gonna work out systemically to be the same. Let's go let's go to uh the something is artifacts. Okay. Uh let's go to Warhead Town. And then we're gonna send Let's send Tom Thompson. Oh, we can actually see their stats now. So she is three decks, one and one. He is one dex, two and two. That's not bad. Okay, these two are just inverses of each other. Um Let's send old Tom Thompson out there. All right, Tom. Now, we can choose equipment to give him. Let's give him the guide. The handbook. Looks like we can't... upgrade to unlock. Okay. Do we want to send anything else out with him? We could send him out with some soup. I kind of want to hang on to the tape. Or maybe not anything. Let's let's not risk giving him anything extra. Let's uh Eh, we can spare a soup, I guess, to give him. Maybe he'll bring it back. That's your soup, Tom. Just remember that. That is your soup, buddy. And the guide. Between the two of those, I think he's got a pretty good chance. Alright. Later, Tom. Communicator might be handy. I'm actually kind of hoping that we might be able to use it ourselves, though. Uh, so let's take a look here. We're still up 2, 2, and 2. Uh, now we could repair the artifact. We can upgrade the atomic battery and tape. If we upgrade the tape, do you think we get more uses out of it? Let's upgrade the atomic battery. I'm hoping it will give us more power. It costs power, but if it can give us four power a turn or three power a turn, that's great. Okay, so here's the whole thing. We've got an expedition here. Tom's going out. We've got this that we're upgrading, the atomic battery. And I'm not giving anybody any super medical supplies or anything else like that today. you're going to send an expedition, why not do it with style? Remember to upgrade your expedition module. Tom set off for a shanty-looking settlement to the south. I'm keen to see what he discovers on this outing. Megan remains loyal. Upgrade completed. New item, thermonuclear battery. Your starving captain finds something to eat. Dee Dee's starving. Can you secure a serving of soup for her? Look at this. It's a much bigger battery. Did we start collecting more per day? Not really. Or at least not yet but it hasn't really kicked into place yet. Um, also, the communications console is still broken. That's a problem. Um, we found something interesting, Captain. There's this lonely statue, a tentacled creature shaped vaguely human-like with hands outstretched as if in a religious blessing. The inscription is barely legible, but it says something about an honor and service to a higher cause and... The way the statue cups its hands downward reminds me of something. Ah, oh, yes, of course. It's exactly the shape of your head. What a coincidence. It's a stretch, but perhaps there's a reward in sticking your noggin in the statue's hands. What do you say, Captain? Will you try it? I mean, no, right? That's a big no. I mean, he did, he did take the spacesuit. I mean, this is a no, right? This is ridiculous. This is like a new. It's not like we're going to get, like, translator microbes injected or something. I think we're going to lose our only space suit. Surely nothing... All right.
right. You guys are intrepid explorers. I guess we'll choose yes. Um, we know that they can take two days of starving. So let's go ahead and starve these two one more day so we can get everybody fed on the same day. Also, I want to uh, fix this communications console. Can we do that? We can do that. They have not enough resources to upgrade those. We can recycle these things. We can craft a lighter or more soup. So interestingly enough, I can't really fix the communications console. Maybe it's a good thing that we made the stereo communicator after all. Now we've got five cans of soup. Life's getting a little desperate. Uh, feels like maybe now would be a good time to go ahead and make... I don't think I'm gonna... I don't think I'm gonna feed them. This is the first turn that they were starving. And they can take two turns of starving. We tested that. So I'll feed those three next turn. Uh, but I do think maybe this is a, a decent time to consider uh, crafting soup. I guess I can't upgrade this yet. I can't just like repair things willy-nilly around the ship that have become damaged. We may need events to allow us to do so. Or maybe they're supposed to get damaged over time and that's why we're moving out. I sure don't know. Well, let's go ahead and make a little food. Let's go ahead and craft some more food. Sure, this will be fine. Day 13 won't be bad for anybody. Okay, Captain, this one's on me. Note to self ominous, fragmented inscriptions on creepy looking statues equals capital B bad. But when you put your head in the statue's receptacle, nothing happened for a while. Mildly annoyed, you started walking away and that's when you passed out. Not sure what the statue did exactly, but the drool coming from the side of your mouth can't be a good sign. We'll run some simple mathematical tests later to see just how badly you were affected. In the meantime, if you could refrain from trying to fit your hand in your mouth, that would be lovely. Your stomach remains empty, you won't survive long if you don't eat something. Megan remains loyal, crafting completed, we have a new can of soup. You seem weak, Captain. Megan's starving, she shouldn't go without food for so long. So, we are starving and weak. Who even knows where this guy is? Alright, well, it is definitely time <laughs> to ration soup out to everybody. So that'll help. Delicious soup for everyone. Uh, where are we at on repairing, recycle, upgrading? Okay. We could repair this. It only requires ten chemicals. We have ten chemicals. Let's see what we've got here. Oh no, Captain! One of the storage lockers is jammed and cannot be opened. It gets worse. It's my favorite locker! We'll lose access to some of our supplies if we do nothing. Also, I will be sad. You need to act, Captain. Will you use your brains or brawn to deal with the problem? Oh no. It actually did remove one of our pips of intelligence. Well, it's still better than our strength, so let's go for it. Uh, everybody's gonna eat. Um, hopefully that also helps take care of our weakness. Um, I don't think it's worth using this to craft yet, so let's go ahead and call it good. Uh-oh. I'm saddened to report that you weren't able to unjam the locker. I'm very disappointed. We've had lots of very creative ideas, but none of them worked. Creative is a synonym of dumb if my thesaurus subsystem is not broken, and if I'm not mistaken, we had some of our food supplies transferred there just yesterday. That soup is as accessible to us as Earth now. Minus two, you're still weak, you are hungry, Dee Dee is hungry, Megan is hungry. Well, crud. Things are not going real well for us. I don't know how to deal with our weakness. So if we take a look at our recycle options, we can recycle the, the artifact. We'll get 20 chemicals out of it. 
We can recycle the atomic battery and get 20 out of it. We can recycle a can of, coop, can of soup for 20 minerals. We could recycle the tape. And we could recycle the communicator. I'm tempted to recycle the artifact. And then look at making some more soup. But if I'm reading this right, and we really are getting two every turn, I could make soup now. I could make soup next turn. And that would get us our two soups back. Because if we craft soup, it's 10 chemicals. So right now that would drop us to eight. Next turn we'll have 10 so we can craft with that. Let's see what the crisis is, and then we'll react to our crafting. The shuttle's in danger, Captain. We're on the path of a vicious gale of a nasty chemical composition which is threatening to sabotage our air filters. They need to be protected, but I lost remote control due to micro damage from the winds, and they have to be closed manually. This toxic tornado is close enough that going out there without the proper equipment would be suicide. If you can do anything, now's the time to act, Captain. We can use a mask, or we can do nothing. But we never, we never got a mask. So... Somebody is probably gonna die. Or it's gonna turn out we can breathe the outside air, and life would be great. Well, crud. Sadly, we don't have the ability to craft like another med kit. So, I guess, let's craft another soup. We can always use soup. I tried. It doesn't, it doesn't let you click it. It's grayed out. So there is no option there. So, this is what we're going to have to do. Now, luckily... Tom's going to come back tomorrow. He also has a can of soup on him, although I don't know if it will, uh, if he'll still have it or not. Hopefully he brings back something useful. Supplies, help, word of a shelter that we can move into, and then the game crashes and loads 60 seconds. I don't know. So, end of day. Uh-oh. We just got an achievement. Dust to dust. So we've died. There's nothing we can do about that without a mask. That's troublesome. Also, I noticed our lights are red. And I don't see Tom. I expected Tom back. Three time markers may not mean three time. So, you know, yikes. Good to know. Computer, make a decision can't even click on it. How about this over here? Ah, you perished! What a bummer! Not wanting to risk the crew's health is generally a good instinct, Captain, but this time it might have been the wrong call. The toxic winds blew all over the shuttle, got into our unsecured air filters. The chemical makeup of the winds is such that it should kill most human organisms immediately. Those who survive would be sure to suffer horrible injuries. Captain, are you even listening? You're looking kind of rigid. Hello? Oh, no, you're dead. Crafting completed, new item available, soup. Dee Dee's weak and hurt, Megan's in poor health, she's weak, and she also got hurt. But since we died as the captain, apparently that is the end. Interesting. I don't know why. A lot of times in the other one, as long as you had at least one of the parents, you were good. But okay, we're going to go ahead and end our adventure here. Let's 